Hey, thank you for joining us for uh, the Coalesc ASP.NET Core kind of talk. We're going to talk about a bunch of stuff around that. Uh, crew has used ASP. Uh, used to core now. It's, they had that old ending thing. Was hard. Who said experience to build web apps uh, with the new step? Awesome. So this is going to be a great spot. Let me talk to you a little bit about how this had came about. So I've been building web applications for about ten years, and about three or so years in, I just I started to just stare with dread at building my next web app because. It's, People that build websites and spend a lot of time doing that with the bar was set really high. So if every time you had a drop down to select something, that drop down needs to support type ahead. It needs to support uh, different kinds of, of ordering, and all that. And it's good to show the tag. And then all of a sudden you're selecting an object and then I had to return that. And so I ended up spending about 70% of my time. Uh, can we get the oh, yes. screen up? Show, show the screen. Yeah. Uh, and I spent most of my time doing that stuff and writing all of the DI backends for all of those things and writing front end code. It, it, I just ended up spending most of my time doing things that I didn't care about. And I wanted to spend more time doing things that were important. We did uh, some software for the NSB and Crisis Nursery, and they had a form that was going to have 150 deals up. A combination of, and it was across several things. Anyway, it was just a big thing. And it was going to have many, many drop downs. Many, many text fields, selections, all the stuff. And I just couldn't build it that many times. And so we built some tooling that would allow us to, in layers, kind of build up the things that we need. So you kind of pick and choose the pieces that you want. If you want to go all the way and take it all, if you want to take part of it, you can take part of it. Um, and so that's what happened with Colas. So I kind of started off there. And then uh, as things went on, we found Andrew, uh, who is my co of Brian on this, and he has essentially taken all the stuff that I did, rewrote it the right away. Uh, and has taken it all over to TypeScript, and now it's uh, it's really there are things in here that I don't even necessarily know that I understand how to work. Um, but it's super awesome, a few little magic, which is great thing. So, uh, so uh, what is it? State uses it helps us to build websites quickly. That's the at the end of the day, that's what we're doing. And that's supposed to move over here. Great, I'll take that one. More like they just call me. Here we go. Then. <laughs> So it allows us to build websites quickly. And if effectively, we say, we want to do the things that are fun. In my mind, the fun things are figuring out what the data model should be and how our classes should look and how all the logic works and writing front ends and doing cool layouts and having actual logic on your front end. Those are the fun things. The lame things are writing all of the APIs for every single dropdown that you're going to do. Writing whatever kind of dropdown you're going to write on your front end. All of those things just like, not very fun. And I just wanted it to all work. And so what Coalesce does is it brings those things together. And so what you're going to get out of the box, you're going to get client side TypeScript view models. So that all you write, you essentially on your models and for your context using EF, those you get gen and it goes and generates a bunch of code. We'll show you that code. And it's going to generate uh, APIs. It's going to regenerate TypeScript models on the front end. Uh, for both Knockout and View, it started with Knockout, and now we basically moved to View for all of our stuff. So if you're still using, if you use Knockout, anybody use Knockout? Good, that's great. Uh, and then it provides also a bunch of View components just that are right out of the box that allow you to do things like uh, binding to lists that provide type ahead and all those things. Multi-select, like, do you ever dread doing a many-to-many -many inside of a web UI and how much time it's going to take you to actually figure out how to make that selection? Just set it up, one component, done. And uh, then we also give you a complete set of admin pages, which we find that was the biggest thing. There, this app that was running, it probably had 20 tables that were just lookup tables. And the user needed to be able to configure those. I was going to have 20, 20 different screens, plus all the editing screens and all that. Coolest just provides this for you right out of the box. Just does. So it doesn't do all the things for you. It just provides you essentially this kind of a best practice set of things to build on, which are the APIs. It provides you TypeScript view models, and then it provides you a bunch of data binding, and then it provides you some uh, additive pages. So what we want to do today, so let's talk enough about the first part of it. I think that's great. Great. Okay, so what we want to do is Andrew and I like cats. And so we are building a cat gallery application. We just want to do it. We're, we're not exactly sure how far we're going to get. We're going to get as far as we can going over the most important stuff first. Uh, but what we're going to do is fire off our project. First thing we're going to do is show you how to just absolutely most basic stuff get started. So what you do is you create a folder. Uh, and you can see here, these are the co coalesce documentation. This is all in GitHub, you can use it. There's actually other organizations that use this. Um, 
that are out there that we worked with. And they said, hey, you know, this is a really great thing for a team. It helps your teams do things really fast. And so he's going to uh, create the cost and all alert. And now he's just going to do a little command to install a template. Uh, and then he's going to run the template just by doing this new Coalesce view. So this means we're building an app for Coalesce. Now, one of the things that this does for us that I really like is that, and this doesn't happen with the built-in templates in Visual Studio, it allows you to separate your data and your web project. So it's going to build two projects for you right out of the gate. One to hold all your database, your EF stuff and your migrations and all that. And another one that holds your front end. Okay. It typically Microsoft gives you templates that are together. And this is not like a super easy thing to set up, but this basically just templates that out for you. I mean, if you just want to use it for that, you can just do so from that if you want. Uh, but it provides some nice kind of general startup. Get right out of the box. So here you go, you have an app, uh, you have that hot text and you look for here. So this is your big project. And that hot text with a model, it just sees you kind of an application user model that can off and uh, gives you based model cravings and those kinds of things. Uh, and then you have your web project, which this is actually something that is fairly difficult to get to work and which we're just kind of providing. It's a view project inside of an ESP.NET project. So there's a couple different ways to arrange your front end. And a lot of folks, they just say, hey, here's my API project and here's a, my, my view front end. But there's times when you want to actually meld those where you want to be able to provide like a razor page that is also, and you want to have part of your application into some of your login pages, use razor, but then be able to move over to view and have that all work really seamlessly. And also be able to do the things like hot reload, hot module reload with view. So for example, you're working in your view side. If I change a file and save it, it'll immediately reload on the UI. Recompile the TypeScript and everything's set. So that is all set up by default when you press F5. Literally, you build, go in, press F5, your app runs, and all of that stuff is set up for you inside of uh, your, your program CS and your startup. So that's all comes right out of the box. Great way to get started if you're looking to use Vue with uh, ASP.NET Core. Now, if you want to have blue screen, uh, this is how you do it. Oh, there we go. Uh, all right, what have I missed so far? Is that our, is that our walkthrough? Yeah, very good. Add all features, we enter create projects. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about VS Code and Visual Studio. Who uses VS Code? Via Visual Studio? Both? Yeah, so. Off the writer. Oh, writer, there's some writer fans, awesome. So the tools inside of Visual Studio Code for writing view are amazing. The tools inside Visual Studio Code for doing C-sharp, not amazing. The tools inside Visual Studio for doing view are not amazing. <laughs> tools inside Visual Studio for doing C-sharp are amazing. And so what we typically will have is two windows. One that is just for editing all the C-sharp stuff. And then I'll have a window for VS Code that is doing all my front end stuff. Uh, there's great extensions. Just take a look in there. We're happy to kind of talk about that later if you want. Uh, and so one, I, I think it's actually a wonderful TypeScript view unified editing experience uh, that is really one I've looked for for a very long time when it comes to building front ends. So we walked through the project structure. What we want to do is uh, and pull up what the template yeah, gives you. This is what you get out of the box. Um, if you don't do anything else to it, press F5 and just start the template, install your packages and start it up. So give you a little bike rotation. Do you have a one admin table down here? Uh, which isn't going to work because we haven't built the migration for it. We have to build the migration. But that's why that doesn't work because there's no object in the database yet. Uh, but this is just kind of the, the right out of the box. So we're going to take this and modify it into our cat gallon. Where we're going to start on that is we're going to just write a few classes. So it's, it's not going to be super complicated. Uh, we're going to want a photo and we're going to want a set of tags and then be able to tag the photos. So how many tables do we need? Three, right? Not super hard quest. Great Dan. Yeah. <laughs> I went trick question. Um so we're so there'll be a, a photo table and right here we have a class. It just is this is straight DF. There's nothing special here. And we'll we'll tell you when anything special comes up. And we've really tried to allow uh, let me just talk just a little bit about what Coalesce does. Coalesce does, it goes in and actually uses Roslyn to examine your code just like Entity Framework does when it builds your migrations. Uh, it goes through there, looks at all your code, and then builds out our stuff in addition to off of that model that it uses costly. So here we have the... Nope, sorry. That's great. He's just going to go top in. We're going to throw our DB sets on the DB context. 
pretty easy stuff. So we have a, a photo object, we have a tag object, and you can see we got a little trick to be here where we're using the name as the key, as a primary key. Uh, you don't have to do this, you could totally just use an ID. It's nothing special. We just wanted to show you that you could do that. Uh, and then there's a color there, and then we have the photo tag, which is literally just that little thing. Just a, a classic way to do that. You have a key, your two foreign keys, and that's it. We did really, really basic stuff. Now, to write the APIs and all the things that you would need to support this is a lot of work. If you want to build a website that is nice and, yeah, I want to enter a tag and actually have it look nice and have a decent interface for that, this is hard stuff to do. And so what we're going to do, we have to do two things. First off, we have to generate some migrations because you still just have to do that. We're not... We don't do any of that stuff for you. It's just go in uh, and build the migration. And so uh, Andrew's going to pop over another thing here and go back to the data project and do his .NET EF migrations add and do the initial migration. And hopefully this will all just add right in there, just like you normally would. Who's using EF in any framework? Oh, great. Lots of folks. So for those of you who don't know, any framework is simply a way to say, I want to start. Well, you can start it in a number of different ways. We usually do code first. So you can write classes and then say, I want to build a database schema off of these classes. And it, it revolution, if you're not trying it, this revolutionizes the way, the way you do database access. And so that does that piece. I'm not going to go ahead and show you all those different pieces. It just, it's just a standard entity framework stuff. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to run this command called .NET Coalesce, which is going to go ahead and compile your projects. Only your data project has to compile. Okay. That's the only one that really matters. We actually compile both. Um, but we doesn't matter for what project we compile. We'll compile that project, and then what we're going to do is generate a bunch of files for you. All the files are annotated with a dot a dot g and either a dot cs or a ts for TypeScript. It is all TypeScript on this on the um, on the front end side. So all of that set up, all your TypeScript compilers, that stuff's all set up right out of the box for you, uh, and just just works for you. So here are all your files, and now I guess we can just let's go ahead and run it. And show them what they get just right out of the box. I, I think we're at the point where we can go ahead and do that. And uh, it does take just a second to start up because there's a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, here we're just doing a .NET run inside of VS Code. You could just press F5 in Visual Studio and exactly. This. And so here you see you have the, this is what we all do is we take this screen and just turn it into the admin page <laughs> and just make this, give it the, there's some security things you can do in there to, to secure that. Oh um, yeah. Hey, there's yeah. some dem some demo stuff that we got to go. Oh yeah. Well, you sit right. It sits here in our notes. Rip out the demo stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We so we have to rip out the demo stuff. There there was an application uh, model and I in the kind of starter stuff just as an example, but we we went ahead and took that out. So we just got to go ahead and and remove the reference of that in the example. Yeah, and this will work if you're going to use uh, who who's using like uh, a federated entity using OAuth using Microsoft sign ins things like that. Is anybody using uh, the uh, just the regular built-in identity framework for like usernames and passwords in our in the local database? It's so spunk. it does both, so those are all okay. Anything that uses the general auth framework will work uh, with the things that it's set up. And the nice thing is, is all the controllers and all that, they're all built out, they're all generated files. So you can go look at them, they're all partials. And so you can actually go in and if you want to modify those, you can change them, see what's going on. Uh, and you can just get, look at all the things. All right, um, we ready to fire it up? Yep. Oh, it is yeah. fired up, awesome. Okay, so we want, like, let's go into the tags. We want to go add a couple of tags. And so Andrew and I were debating, he won. Up. So he has two cats Ooh. named Freya and Grace. So he's going to make Freya and Grace. So he's going to add Freya there. And we can add a color. We're going to show you something really cool that we just added, which is the ability to have a color picker, uh, which is now built in. So you can just annotate that with the word color and you're going to see color picker. But right now, we're going to go ahead and just put in a, a, a hex code uh, to allow. So I have a green and a, a yellow, uh, red and green. Yeah. And so you can see, these are just the, the nice things you get out of the box. You create a database and you get kind of this Excel editor right here and you click the thing up at the top and now you can just edit the fields. Uh, there's sorting and searching and all that just uh, available just there. Now, the nice thing is, is not only do you get the admin page, but you also get the API backends that support this. And so there's all the documentation about how to call those things. And then if you want to do, uh, there's we're not gonna show it, well, much of this, but there's annotations you can put on to control whether things are read or write for which roles and things like that. There's a lot of different layers of security that you can put in on top. Mm -hmm. Any questions so far? Yeah. If you don't want to use material, 
Right. So if you don't use material UI, we've provided controls for that. And like I said before, there's layers. So if there's your code, which is all this stuff, your models and all that, we're going to go ahead and put APIs on top of that. We're then going to give you TypeScript view models, which are, I'm sorry, TypeScript models, which are just the models of all your classes. So you just get that out of the box. You don't have to make versions of that. You actually get DTOs, nullable DTOs uh, for all your objects as well. So it makes it easier to be able to pass things back and forth. And so all that just comes, we give you generated stuff like that. We then give you a layer that allows you to have access. So it has all the API calls. And so you have, you have separation there between your objects and the APIs that gather them. And then on top of that is the material UI stuff that we give you out of the box. So if you don't want that, you're just not using that very top layer. So you can instantiate, you could, let's say, instantiate a list, which I'll show you in a minute, and grab all the stuff back. You're just going to get objects back from the API, like two lines of code. And now I have objects and a list that I can search and sort and do all the things to. And I just have to bind them into whatever framework that I've seen. So like, let's say I was using Angular. I can just bind them in Angular. Real easy. If I want to use Vue, the Vue stuff's here. If I want to use Bootstrap, you can use Bootstrap and just do things that way. If you want to use jQuery and mess with stuff. You know, the only thing you're going to lose out on, you know, a lot of these components that we based on um, Beautify, which is a Vue uh, material design framework, um, you know, there's a bunch of out-of-the-box components, the things we're doing dropdowns and kind of the rich interactions there. You know, we don't have those for other frameworks. Um, you know, it's certainly something that we've been floating around the ideas of, but, you know, hey, let's, you know, give other options, you know, not just a, a material framework, but maybe something else, um, something we've got ideas for, but, um, you know, but if there's interest in that. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, pull a little bit of a small cake out of the proverbial oven. And what that is, is that we don't have time to do a couple of things. We don't have time to add often, so we're just going to add. Um, Andrew's written some off. This is going to be out available as a demo on our on our Intellitech sample site. So you go look at this. We actually have a live site up and running that we'll show you at the end. You can go put your cats up there if you want. It's going to go viral. So be really careful. One's going to be this one supervised. Uh, so it, we'll, we'll be able to show you that. So we're going to pop this up. And have you switched over already? Yeah, with a, we're over here in Visual Studio now. Um, just show you. Hey, you can do it in Visual Studio. You can do it in VS Code. You know, whatever you like. Right, we're going to go ahead and get this started up here and take a look at what we have. And so what we did is we didn't want to take the time to actually draw out the entire UI and make it all nice. So we just, uh, it's just a blanket, just a stock view, beautify UI. There's nothing special about it. We didn't do anything, anything magic and just some default stuff stuck in. So you can see a picture with tags, a little thing across the top. We have an upload button in the right and then an admin button. Uh, that will allow us to choose something and an upload. They're, again, these are just buttons. They're just it's just stock view stuff. Yeah. So no no functionality in your way to upload. This says you know it's a placeholder. So what we want to do is we want to show you a couple of things. So not only can you take and project your classes out, but I can make methods on my classes that are then callable via an API that we build for you from your front end. Okay, because this is one of the things that's kind of hard. So I make a method on the back end that does something, and I want to receive, let's say, an object or some data. That's kind of tricky. And so what we do is we like to basically come in into your class. So here we have a photo class, and we're going to go ahead and just gonna, I think just copy and paste the method. In. Yep. Uh, the method that will allow us to upload. So this is in our class, and you can do this however you want. There's a way to build services, and there's a lot of different models associated. And here uh, we're using some Bob containers. So if you want to go in here and look at how to use Azure Blob storage to store things, this is doing that. We're actually transiting everything through our app. So there's a couple of ways to, to make that happen. You can just give them the long, you can use a, a long identifier just to let it be public on Azure Blob storage. We're actually um, gatekeeping all that stuff. And so all the, the images actually go through our app. So we can add extra security. Uh, and here it's, it's really pretty simple. Uh, when you have a method, uh, you see up at the top, see the, upload, uh, the upload method, we can inject automatically. You you can get an, your DB context that must come in um, by dependency injection, as well as your user, your claims principal. Whoever's currently logged in the system, you'll get that information by default if you want it. You can also choose with the eject keyword to inject anything that you have registered during your ASP.NET startup routine in dependency injection. So anything that's set up in there, you can pull that in. And then anything else, will just automatically be translated into methods on your uh, API and then into the TypeScript. You'll automatically get methods inside TypeScript to call. And we'll show you that in just a second. Um, pretty basic stuff here. 
Um, and then really it's just go out, get the Bob container, upload the thing to the Bob container, get the ID from the Bob container back, this URL, create something, create an object, a photo object, and save it to the context piece of yeah. It's just spot code. There is no special call that stuff in here. It's just a method that does saving. It's just like, and one of, that's one of the things we really strove is we're striving for as part of this framework is to be able to do that and have it so you're not writing a bunch of weird stuff. You just write regular code and we help you with pushing things out and making it easier. And so if you want a methodonic class that you want to have maybe yeah, it's just decorate with a coalesce method. That's it. You decorate with a coalesce decorator and now all of a sudden it's on your client side. And you can put your security requirements around it. So if you want to want to assess via certain roles, you can do that. You can do your security at Tali. Uh, there's there's a lot of different ways to do your, to do your security. You can just write your security by hand if you want. Uh, but yeah, there's there's lots of things. And again, you can see exactly what it looks like. And we'll show you. We actually have a whole screen that shows you the security profile of your entire app and shows what 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 things are accessible. Remind me when we come back and start the app and we'll take a look at that. So this is a static method. And so you, you're not handing anything in. You're not calling it on an actual photo. Now, there is another way that you can actually call instance methods too. So you can get an instance method on the client side and actually call a method that then automatically makes an API call for you back to your backend and then returns data for you. And so all that plumbing gets done through TypeScript so you can just make a single call and, and everything works. So here is the other one. So again, all you see is the coalesce. That's the only thing that's really different. And if you want it, this download piece uh, essentially gives you the information that you need. Uh, it gives you an iFile um, object uh, to be able to download. Hmm. I'm just short, oh, I'm shorting the namespace out easing, but we'll just leave it as it. And and again, here all we're doing is going out to the the blob client and and getting the file information and returning. Mm -hmm. So so real simple stuff. All right, any questions so far? Yes. For the a wire here, a last project you end up with like really bad models. What do you mean as far as like you have like all of your business logic is all in your model. No, not necessarily. There's two ways to do it. So you can either put your business logic like what we're doing here and put them in your models if you want them that way, or you can leave your models really thin and just write services. And so the services can basically work and say, yeah, well, are all the services dealing with users over here and all the ones over here. And then it will build out effectively controllers. If you're familiar with that API sets of endpoints that are grouped that way. And you can either use your objects or you can create new objects. And so it'll automatically build the pieces for you uh, that you need to make that happen. So you might like, choose to apply OLS and get for those different layers. It, different layers, right? You can use it as much or as little as you want just by using that coalesce attribute. You kind of get the pieces that you want in there. If the pieces that you don't, you can hold them in the back. Oh, so you could do, you know, something like this. Yeah. If you could write, you can generate just an interface as a method and then coalesce will generate everything out on that interface. And then whatever the implementation is, is just whatever you registered with your dependency detection container. Um, so, you know, coalesce doesn't, doesn't even know about this class. It only knows about this interface. Uh, it will just pull, pull an instance out of your DI container whenever it needs to operate on that service. Assuming that this was actually on. And again, you can go in and look at the generated controllers. You can see everything that it's doing. So there's not really any magic. It's, it's all right there for you to look at. So are we ready to, you ran coalesce? Are we ready to? Yep. So we went ahead and ran, uh, ran the coalesce generation <laughs> once we had at least two methods. We see we did regenerated a couple of TypeScript files as well as the controller, uh, the backs this particular type. Uh, so now we can go ahead and start okay, that. command pages. And what's cool is that we now provide admin page endpoints for all of the methods that we just created. So you can go and use those and test them, right? Which is kind of cool. You want to, hey, give a little shot, see how this works. Also, from a unit testing perspective, this is all built so that you can really easily unit test all these things. You notice we're using services and all those methods. Those are super easy to test from the back backend, uh, just using a unit test. If you want to do an integration test, you can you, you can stand up uh, the little self-hosted thing. I don't know if any, who uses the little self-host runner? I forget what all the right words are. What's, what are the right words there? So, the right words are. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And there, there's a little runner you can set up and you can call your actual API controller endpoints, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of, you know, so I actually had to stop it. I forgot a step here. Um, you know, we're using blob storage and we're uploading these to, to, you know, to this URI that's configured in our, in our app settings. Oh, uh, we actually but I forgot it. to actually add that to our app setting. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, and configure the, the container. 
for a blob storage there, the authentication is all using kind of the integrated Active Directory authentication. This is actually integrated uh, logging in as me, uh, which is pretty cool stuff to use in Azure. There's a number of ways that you can do that. Uh, this isn't an Azure talk, but you can authenticate that way with, with SQL databases and blob storage, and it kind of eliminates the need to do passwords, uh, which is awesome. If you ever want to have discussions about how to secure things, Andrew's a great guy to have conversations with about like, how do I not have my passwords in my connection streaks? If you're in Azure, like there's ways to do that. Then Prezi actually has a, a, a paper out on that, which is pretty cool stuff. So here we go. Here's the page. Uh, let's go look at the admin pages. Uh, let's look the security overview. Click on that. So what we do is we give you an, an overview of exactly what you can do to all of your models. What's open, what's closed. Okay. So you can go control this, but there's, you never want any surprises when it comes to security. So we have a page that shows you exactly what's available. Right now we're just wide open because we haven't done anything. Everything by default in Coalesce, you have to be logged in to get anything. So if you're an anonymous user, it is completely locked. If you're logged in, then you can do all the things. Now you can change that and just provide some annotations to do that. Okay, so now let's go ahead, photo. And you can see down here on the bottom, there's an action for upload. So this just comes automatic out of the box because you created that static endpoint. The static endpoint is on the list because we don't have a particular one. Uh, and so we can just choose a file. Again, file choosers built in. Uh, you can look at how to do some of those things. And then we can automatically choose tags. And if you does the drop down, oh, we didn't we didn't turn on the many to many thing yet. Um, there's a way to make it. Using... There's a many to many attribute to make that work. And then we can decide whether it's public or private. So this does take a second because we haven't given it a lot of information about exactly how the logging works in Azure's system yeah. pokey in this particular case. And you're running in development and you're kind of using this default Azure credential thing. It tries a whole bunch of different methods, um, including ones that it kind of expects to work when you're deployed out. Hey, look, it didn't work. Yeah, nice. uh, don't you love demos that don't work? Yeah. We, we, we did this the other day. We were in the same era. We wrote down what we had to do. We're going to discover here in about 15 seconds. Oh, yeah. And we uh, did it was right. The tag... So our error here, we'll see in our output, is that we have a foreign key conflict on the tags uh, because this tag, Freya, I actually added to the other demo, which is a different database than the demo that we're doing right now. So I get to pop over to the admin pages and see oh, my tags are actually go test and test. So we should add it. We should add tag. So we'll go ahead and add uh, the ones that I thought were going to be here. And we'll just add the one. We you want to shake? Is that pretty nice? And then we'll go ahead and try it again. Rest. That, that's the thing. Again, cool. So we're still going to retry all the authentication stuff. That so done. Great. There it is. It updates the list up above. And there you see that. Yeah, and list. Now, what we, what we really want to do is not use the admin pages to do uploads. We actually want to implement them in a proper uploader. And so we're going to show you how to go through that. And essentially, we're just going to do that inside of view. Now, the way we've done this is simple. So there's actually better ways to do it. Uh, and you see that the upload button is up there on the top. Now, things up there on the top exist in uh, the app.do file, which is kind of your wraparound Chrome stuff. And so we're just going to put it in there. We're not making a separate component or anything like that, which is really should be on a separate component. Uh, but that's just the way we're going to do it for this demo to make it a little bit more clear. So here you can see uh, the top, this, this part, and this is just literally all the Chrome that is around the app. And we're going to come out here. If you're not familiar with how this works, you basically have your HTML area up on the top. You have some little style stuff that you usually do in the next section. And then you have a TypeScript piece. And what's really cool about the tools that are in Visual Studio Code is that it actually knows and is smart about what's compiled in what spots. And so you get really nice IntelliSense when it comes to being able to, to do these things. So what we're basically doing here is we're saying we're going to create an object called photo list. And that is going to be what we're calling a list view model, which is a way that we can go to the server and ask it for Ask it to call the API endpoint and give us a list of things. Now, what we're not showing you here is there's a bunch of stuff on here that allow you to do filtering and sorting and searching and all the different stuff. There's methods you can just set and bind into. Say, hey, here's a text box and bind it to the search. Let's bind these things. It just automatically works. Uh, and so here you see showing you how to do the dollar params. Uh, but you see search, you can set that to a field. You can, so you can set it if you always want to say, hey, we only ever want to show people, show the, uh, the, 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 the ones with tags or file names that have this kind of characteristics. You can just set those things. So here we have a photo list view model. We then have the list of tags, and it really is just as simple as tag list.look. 
and it calls the API endpoint on the back end and loads the stuff up. You can tell it how many you want, which page, and all of that stuff is available right out of the box. And quite honestly, that is what takes a long time is by having to write paging on everything, which you really should do because you don't want to have somebody put 10,000 things in, somebody calls your API endpoint and you return all 10,000 on. So all of that stuff's just kind of baked into these view models. And again, these are all generated files. So you can come back and look at all the details of how exactly all the steps implemented. So we're not doing a bunch of magic underneath the covers. It all is right out there for you to take and, and look at. So here we're going to write a method that's going to take it upload this photo. So we're going to call this. Remember when we click that upload button that we want to click, we're going to go ahead and call this method. We're going to, uh, there's this thing called upload invoke with arcs, which simply means that whenever you have a method that we're calling, we actually provide bindable endpoints for those bindable uh, properties. So you can take those properties, because I think we had to pass in three properties, uh, the file name that you're passing in, the body, and then if it's private or public, oh, and then tags. The file, oh, look, and tags. Yeah, that's, if it's not, those are the first two are one thing. Uh, so those three things you're, you want to do, you can just bind those into whatever framework you're looking at. Right? Just go ahead and go ahead and bind them. And then what invoke with args is just going to call it with those arguments. You can also specify the arguments as just arguments mm -hmm. if you want to do it that way too. No, so you could also do it uh, like this and, and then you just pass those in. Just so all the nice IntelliSense. Just that's what I like. You don't have to remember things. Uh, so we're going to invoke with args. And then really once that's done, who's used the kind of async await pattern inside of TypeScript, JavaScript? Okay, a few. That's a great pattern. This is really nice. So you know, you notice we're not doing dot then. So uh, we're using what's the, the promises? Promises, but the framework that we're using. Are, are, are we still using the framework? Or are we not using Axios? Axios? Yeah. So it, yeah. So it's Axios under the hood. Um, is just the kind of the wrapper around doing the actual uh, asynchronous call uh, back up to the API. Um, that it offers a bunch of nice things that you can then hook into kind of independent of anything that Coalesce is doing. You know, you can use that to intercept the request, add any kind of headers. If you have a special way that you need to do authentication, like you need to add a bearer token on your, uh, on your header to do the authentication back to the server. Uh, you can just do that with Axios. Coalesce doesn't really care what you do. So all you're seeing here is the call. The, we're just resetting the arcs to set them back to their default values. So the next time you open the window. You don't see the values that you had in there the last time. And then we're just saying the set the value to close the, yeah, the, the it bullet close the that's currently open. So that's really all that's going on. Uh, and then what we're going to do is come in here and you see there's just a file we put. We're going to bind this into that argument that we were talking about when we said with args. These are the arguments that we're binding to. So when you select that, again, just a straight, oh, this is actually a special thing. So the straight one works. But it's the one I just want to say straight JavaScript or straight type it uh, straight HTML. We teach a class using for web and we counted the number of concepts in different languages you have to know for the class. And it's like 10, which is pretty insane. And I usually just list out technologies until I find the right one. In this case, it's kind of HTML. In this case, it's view. This anytime it ends up, it starts with C, that means coalesce. So we have a special coalesce input that automatically detects the kind of thing you're trying to bind to and just gives you the right kind of binding and um, ending experience before. Again, just straight view. If you're not familiar with view, this is just how view works. Uh, we specify which model it is and um, where it is. It's for, it's for a file. And in here, the radio, again, just saying, what, what model are we binding? We're binding it to our photo upload. So that's the method. The arguments that we want to pass in there, and the argument is the is public argument. So we're just passing in that one. It just binds automatically when the person switches it. It automatically updates the model. That's what Vue does, just as data. Who's used a data binding framework before? Knockout, Angular, Vue, React. Great. So a bunch of people are familiar with that. If you're not trying those, definitely give that a try. It's way easier than using straight JavaScript um, or jQuery or something like that. And then here uh, for the uh, for the list box, we're looking at taking. And what this is doing is we have that tag list that we loaded from before. It's loading up all the tags. There's a number of different ways to do this. And we're just kind of doing it the most naive way. In this case, we're just loading up the, the box with all the, all the options. And we're saying, take the list and dollar items is going to be your collection of, of things. And there's also things like loading indicators and all of that. So you can see you bind to those to show little, uh, loading indicators on the screen. And then the map is just saying, hey, just grab me all the names because it's going to return objects and you just need names in this case because we're just returning the list of strings. 
and this will automatically concatenate uh, that B combo box will just concatenate them for you. Uh, and then here, all we're doing is the uh, on the button, there's a B button right there on line 53. And we're just saying whenever somebody clicks on that, call that method called upload photo. And that really is it. So we bind, we do upload, and it just does the things. I mean, this is how you're supposed to write view code. And when you're looking at writing modern UIs, this kind of pushes you into what we kind of call best practice. So here you see, there's the, the UI there where you go ahead and pick a, an image. You see you have a, a nice little UI for public-private. That could be a slide or two. It could be a number of different things. We chose some, um, uh, some radio buttons. And then we have the tags here. I go ahead and we can select that. You see that you see all the type ahead stuff is just happening. Uh, and you get that out of the box. And you see that's also multi-select. So we just solved the multi-select problem as well with the, with a nice UI. Now, this does take a second for the same reason the other one does. And we have 10 minutes. Fortunately, we're getting close to being done. Uh, and then I think once this is done, we can show you it. We'll, the last thing we have to do is populate this list. Yep. Right. So are you going to continue on or are we going to hard reset to a, uh, I can just paste this in your, uh, you know, and I can just kind of talk about great, right, but let me pull up in my, um, my copy and paste source over here for everything that we've done earlier. I have been sad that there's been no cat pictures. I, I know it is cool at this point. There's a moment. Well, we're very, very close yeah. to cat pictures. Um, so here, you know, we just have, you know, down here in our script, we just kind of have some, you know, placeholder data, not really real data. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and replace this with uh, some pretty simple code to go ahead and load that. So we're just going to instantiate up a photo list. We're going to set the page size really high. So we get lots of cats and we're just going to then go ask the server for that. Um, there's a little hack here. Basically don't worry about this gallery version too much. It's kind of a little view hack and it's not really the right way to do this, but essentially when we, when we hit the upload button, we want the gallery to refresh, but those are in different components. And so we need to know, you know, when that thing happens. Uh, so we're just going to do, uh, again, this kind of a hack here. Uh, over here on our main app that owns uh, the upload button, we're going to say when upload is complete, uh, we're going to just increment this number and then we're going to watch for when that number changes to know when to reload this. So it's just a little hook that says, hey, whenever you change this property, go ahead and call the load method on the list so that we get your brand new cat on the list. Um, and then the other thing, we just need to update uh, this. You know, we'll see images. That's not what it's called anymore. It's called photo list. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and just going to grab the whole thing out of the oven. I don't know. This is not very different at all. Um, we're just changing this instead of iterating over that, you know, example thing. We're going to iterate over the photo list items, which is the things that it's pulled back from the server. Uh, we're going to set the source of the image to the URL for that download method. So this is a kind of a different way of interacting with a, a method. Um, we can actually, for a method that's implemented with an HTTP get, can bind the, uh, the URL of that directly. Um, I don't know why it's upset about tags, but, oh, we skipped a step. Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, so to get the menu to menu stuff working in Coalesce, um, you want to tell it um, kind of a name for what you want the other side of the many many collection to kind of be. Uh, in this case, we're going to do that. Did anybody use EF6, like in the old EF6, the full framework? The old days. It used to do automatic middle tables for you. So you wouldn't even have to do anything. You could just point them to each other and just magically work. Um, that doesn't really, they're kind of bringing that back a little bit in EF core. Uh, but we prefer to have the middle table, but we want the niceness of not having to worry about it. And so we did create this annotation to build out all the stuff that you need to basically add tag collections on either side really super easily. There's just a collection of tags you can just use. Now. So whenever you change something like that, we do have to, you, you have to run that .NET coalesce. That's going to generate the code for you. Until you run .NET coalesce, it doesn't ever change your stuff. It doesn't generate anything. Make it there are new. there are some things you can do without regenerating, but you know generally you want to err on the side of of actually regenerating. Um, yeah. So this is actually I think working, but again the uh, the blob storage act is a little slow, and um, I don't know why that's upset anybody. Oh, yeah, tag tags. That's why. 
left the wrong things in there. Any questions? I think one letter. Heron's keeps on giving us signals, meaning we're almost done. Mm -hmm. Couple minutes left. Hopefully, we get this thing done. Oh. So let me just talk about a few of the things we're not going to have a chance to go through. So there's a whole piece in here what we call data sources, which allows you to predefine how you want to search and filter your data as it goes back to the server. There's ability to go in and specify how you want to do searching. And so you can actually do search trees. So let's say, for example, you have this and I want to be able to search my cats, but I want to be able to automatically search on the tags. You can just provide search attributes that track it right down to that tag. And so then on the default cat search and you type the name of a tag, it automatically does all for you. Now you can set that up by hand if you want, really easy to do as well. Um, all that stuff it just comes right out of the box. Uh, let's see, search. And then there's a lot of functionality also around being able to control who can delete and being able to do soft deletes and hard deletes. Have people run across soft deletes? Is that a thing that you're familiar with? Yeah, so when you basically just mark something for deletion, uh, it's not really gone, like you archive it or something like that. Uh, that's all really well supported um, internally by COAS because we want to do that. There's also good support for things like doing multi-tenancy. Uh, there's pieces there if you have to kind of keep people's data apart for different reasons. Oh, we, have five, we have five minutes left. That's a lot. There's so much, so many things we can show in that. The, the, this boat is might even downloading. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> You're just not going to see the cats. Uh, this was this worked way faster you the other day when we did this, but I don't, I don't know when it's there. It's all my respect here, and it's, it's all these people on the network. Let's uh, go to detach and debugger because we don't really need. It. I don't need and it. Debugger. Oh, it slows need everything debug. down. Has anybody noticed how much slower it is when you're debugging an ASP.NET Core application um, as opposed to just running it straight out? Uh, where are folks running your ASP.NET Core applications? Who's running them in, in like an Azure app service? Anybody, a few folks. How about on on-prem ISS? I know, yes. I, uh, IS, uh, yeah, ISS is the space station. Yeah. Anybody I'd right? I'd like to run them yeah, on the space cool. station. I, ISS, yeah, IIS, whatever that is. Um, any other places where you're running up? Well, if they best. Okay. Yeah, there's AWS a little bit trickier. There's not quite as many ways to run these um, VMs. They have a couple other things uh, that you can do over in, in AWS land. You actually can run these things. I ran a CoS app inside of a Lambda function, uh, which is not recommended, but it does work um, uh, with a, an API gateway for an end. So um, let's see, while we wait for I, the cats to load. I, I have no idea, but let's switch to the one that we made earlier. Yeah, we're going to pull another cake out of the oven. And... Hey, look at this one. Boom. So we'll show you some of the features that are in the in the Final Cat gallery. So yeah, Azure. So this is actually hosted up in Azure, uh, running on an app service, uh, backed with an Azure SQL database and an app, uh, and then just blob storage, same blob storage. And here you can see each one of the cat pictures. And the cat pictures are actually sorted by default, um, by date. So you're seeing the most current ones first. So if we uploaded a new one, you'd see your picture right up there. You can actually go and upload your own cat pictures. This is live, catgallery.azurewebsites.net. Chrome will tell you it's a dangerous site for some reason and figure out it's probably dangerous cat pictures. Uh, so here's a new picture. He's um, He has a picture of Alice and you see Alice now will uh, pop up right there. Uh, now we are transiting all these images through our application. You don't have to do that. It would be way faster if we didn't and you just load them straight from blob storage. Uh, but we decided to kind of show that little security thing. You want to see it. The search, if you look up there, uh, you can see if he just types um, like best cat. If you type best cat, yeah. Yep. You see the best cat, which happens to be my cat. Uh, and so you, you can choose that. And even if you, if we just started a few characters, um, there, so you can get, well, we only have one, but if, if they were- we, do. we have gray and grace. Oh, oh, gray and grace. Yeah, good point. So you can set up how that works where you either do like a, a part of the word or the whole word or split on spaces. There's a lot of different um, features there. Again, you can either implement your own or there's a few kind of out of the box um, things that you can just do. So anyway, Thanks for taking the time to hang out with us. Any questions? We would love to if you want. Yeah, Pat. I'm just curious. So on average, how much time is the city to have that out? We figure it takes a what? It's at least 50%. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. think it's more than that. Like the other day, I was I worked with this group that does Pinewood Derbies on it. And they have a, the Pinewood Derby software is horrible. Like there's the little, little race cars, get the little bot wood and Pinewood Derby thing. And it was horrible. Yeah, though. And it was, it took, I probably have 12 hours into an app that now tracks users and cars and races. And there's probably six or eight tables and 
probably four or five different screens. And there's no way I could have built that in that amount of time using just having to build it on myself. So I bet you in that case, it took about one quarter of the time that it would take otherwise. So this is a lot, a lot faster, uh, depending on the complexity of the app. And there's a lot of production apps out there right now that are using this. So it's, it's, it's used. And if, if you've taken a late cruise, um, you've probably used this. If you've done several other things, some shipping apps and things like that. So. Great. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Have you incorporated uh, Clayton's AI? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we thought about it. Like it's some crazy little cats up there and kind of be a cool, cool mashup. So mm -hmm. anyway, great. Check out the next, um, the next sessions. There's more sessions. Another session up here, which is going to be Blazer MVVM. Blazer MVVM by Kelly is going to be in here. I thought I saw Kelly, but he left. He got bored. Um, and then there's going to be two more downstairs. Uh, one that's on testing and one that's on Terraform. If people want to look at the Kagao resource code, where can they find that? Yes. Yeah. So that's going to be out here on GitHub. It's, um, we have the self examples under yeah. IntelliTech samples is the repository and the repository is on cat gallery. And then it's cat gallery, not as your website. So that if you want to go post pictures of your cat. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks everybody.